Hello friends, in today's lecture we will see what is an AND gap in 5 minutes. So whenever you have a patient with high AND and gap uh, with metabolic acidosis, look at the AND and gap. So always mind the gap. So how to calculate the AND and gap? So the normal values of AND and gap are, it is 8 to 12 if you are not considering potassium for calculation. And if you're using potassium for calculation, it is about 12 to 16 milliequivalents per liter. So let us see, as we know that total cations is equal to the total anions by the law of electroneutrality. So in cl a clinical scenario, we have some amount of unmeasured cations and unmeasured anions. We routinely measure sodium, potassium, the cations, and here chloride and bicarbonate, the anions. But when we see the difference always there is a gap that is called as the anion gap so what are the reasons for this anion gap this is because there are certain unmeasured anions like phosphates sulfates and you have your lactic acid and ketone bodies which are the unmeasured anions in a case of pathology normally it is because of phosphates and sulfates and also albumin plays a very important role in formation of anion gap. So how do you calculate anion gap? Normally when you are not considering potassium because it is a small uh, value in the ECF. So you take sodium minus chloride plus bicarbonate. That will give you the normal anion gap which is around 12. So always whenever you have a high anion gap uh, in a clinical scenario and if a patient has got hypoalbuminemia you have to give a correction because every one gram decrease in serum albumin so will give a false reading of about 2.5 times in the calculated anion gap. So let us see what are the reasons for normal anion gap metabolic acidosis. Suppose you have a patient for patient with a metabolic acidosis and his calculated anion gap is normal so you think of these causes like diarrhea, renal tubular acidosis, adrenal insufficiency etc. A very important thing here, chronic kidney disease will cause normal anion gap metabolic acidosis. But a patient with a renal failure, acute kidney injury will, will develop a high anion gap metabolic acidosis because of uremia. Now lactic acidosis and ketoacidosis are two most important causes in the clinical scenario for high anion gap metabolic acidosis because lactic acid plays as an unmeasured anion and in case of ketoacidosis you have astroacetic acid and beta hydroxybutyric acid which are the unmeasured anions. So this is a mnemonic for reasons of increased anion gap metabolic acidosis. You have something like methanol, uremia, diabetic acidosis. So remember mud piles. This is a very common mnemonic. So for your benefit, I have also mentioned some other mnemonics like mud piles, gold marks and cute dimples. Whatever is easier for you to remember, you can remember. Now after knowing what is normal anion gap and what are the causes for high anion gap, we will see what are the causes for low anion gap. A low anion gap is most importantly caused by hypoalbuminemia because albumin is a negatively charged protein and as I have already told you a decrease in the albumin of 1 gram per deciliter can cause an anion gap to decrease from 2.5 to 3 times. So how it is important in a clinical scenario? Let us suppose there is a patient with diabetic ketoacidosis. You have uh, his albumin measured and uh, it is low but you calculate his anion gap that is coming as normal. So would you like to consider it as a normal anion gap metabolic acidosis? You will be surprised to see if you give a correction of albumin and calculate the anion gap, the anion gap will be high. So in a patient with hypoalbuminemia, you can, it can be misleading. Uh, a patient can present with a normal anion gap, but still after correction, you will be surprised that the anion gap is actually very high. So other causes of uh, a low anion gap are um, in patients with multiple myeloma where there is an increase in the plasma IgG. 
so in this five minute lecture we have learned about the normal anion gap and its calculation so what are the causes for high anion gap and what are the reasons for high anion gap and how to uh, give a albumin correction uh, in case of a metabolic acidosis with hypoalbuminemia and what are the causes for low anion gap and we have learned about the mnemonics thank you for watching next lesson we'll learn about the strong end difference thank you